210 fifth graders formed 50 teams at this year's Battle of the Books. We'll tell you which teams came out on top. The Lake Orion community came out to help the Lions Club raise funds for a good cause during the 2017 Lions races. The Orion Area Chamber of Commerce hosted a ribbon cutting ceremony to celebrate the official grand opening of a new Lake Orion business. And a fun night of bowling raised funds for Leader Dogs for the Blind, an organization that's been serving Oakland County almost 80 years. Hello, I'm Melissa Kratt. And I'm Shane Stockwell. We'll have those stories and more on this edition of ONTV News. With all the technology and other distractions that kids face today, it's difficult to get them excited about reading. But the Orion Township Library has found a way to turn reading into a fun competition. On the morning of Saturday, March 11th, 210 fifth graders formed 50 teams for the 2017 Battle of the Books, held at Scripps Middle School. The students were given a list of 15 books to read back in November. At the event, the students were asked 50 questions and had to respond with a book's title and author. Many of the teams were dressed in colorful costumes and came up with creative team names. They were so excited. I have to say, I think that this year were some of the most creative costumes that we've seen. They're always creative. Um, but this year, I just thought they were very funny with the team names that accompanied the costumes. <laughs> Following the competition, the library staff tallied up the scores and the teams returned on Tuesday for an award ceremony held at Lake Orion High School. The evening kicked off with a presentation from author Allison DeCamp, whose book My Near Death Adventures was one of the 15 books included in the competition. My great-grandmother in the uh, 1930s, um, she made my grandmother get married at 15 and she had my Uncle Stan when she was 16. And then the dad was out of the picture, so they had to work in lumber camps to make money. So that is where I came up with the what if idea of what would it be like to live in a lumber camp as a young boy with all these rough and tumble lumberjacks and not know who your father was. So that's where the idea came from, my own family history. Following the presentation, teams were called up on stage to receive a certificate of participation. Three teams with the highest score were saved for last. Finishing in third place were the Book Baristas with a score of 88. Coming in second was Reading Roundup with a score of 92. And named winner of the 2017 Battle of the Books was the nameless team representing Carpenter Elementary School. They came out on top with a score of 94. Um, I just had a really um, great time at the battle and at the ceremony. It was really nerve-wracking and I was really shaking when we started it and it was really fun. And then what was your reaction when you heard your team announce? I started becoming numb and I, could, I can barely move right now. <laughs> it really hurts. Awesome. It's amazing. It was exciting and um, kind of competitive. And then finally when they announced your name, the team name today, describe what went through your head, what your reaction was. Um, I was um, like really excited and I was mind blown that we won. Um, it was just really awesome because I didn't know my team would get this far and it's just really fun. Describe what Saturday was like. It was just like really hectic because I was sick that day but I still made it um, and I just didn't know that it was going to be like this way. What was the best part of Battle of the Books? Um, it was just coming together as, and it, like me, like just having fun, but also like doing reading and academics. Um, I don't know. It was just kind of surprising and really nice at the same time. Tell me the story of how you got your team name. Um, well, we were going to be the Book Slayers, but that name was already taken. So we didn't know what to be, so we felt nameless, and it went along with one of the books, The Nameless City, so it was good. Terrific. Um, would you recommend Battle of the Books to next year's fifth graders and why? Um, I would definitely recommend it because you get to read so many different books that you probably would have never read before, and you get to have new experiences. 
all the teams that participated received a gift bag. The winning team received gift certificates and will have their name included on a plaque that will hang in the library. Leader Dogs for the Blind has been a staple for Rochester Hills, Michigan since it was founded in 1939. The charity operates solely on donations and fundraiser events to properly train the puppies to become service dogs. On Sunday, March 19th, Classic Lanes in Rochester hosted its second annual Pins for Pups event, which gathered puppy raisers, soon to be service dogs, and guests for a fun night of bowling. From 2 to 5 p.m. on Sunday, Classic Lanes was filled with service dogs, avid bowlers, and generous donators, all raising money and awareness for Leader Dogs for the Blind. Pins for Pups had several raffle prizes and a 50-50 drawing for guests on top of all the bowling. Chris Murray, who is the Community Relations Director at Classic Lanes and also the fundraising chair for the Lions Club, explains how Leader Dogs gets their funding. Um, they get money from grants, private donations, and events like this. The Lions Clubs are big supporters of Leader Dog. Murray set a goal to double the amount of money they raised last year, which was $4,500. Murray didn't have all of the totals in at the time, but she did state that they had surpassed last year's donations. Murray was very pleased with the turnout. Amazed, amazed with the turnout. Turnout was better than I anticipated. We had 15 lanes, so our capacity for bowlers was 75 to 90. Um, we maxed those out and we took the other two lanes that were available and that's all that was available. If, if I could have gotten more lanes, I probably could have filled more lanes. Puppy raisers and their dogs were also in attendance at Classic Lanes, informing people with adoption information and other ways to help out leader dogs. Murray sees herself doing more fundraising events in the future for the Leader Dogs charity. If you would like to donate to Leader Dogs of the Blind or adopt a dog and become a puppy raiser, check out their website at www.leaderdog.org or call them at 248-651-9011 for more information. The 143rd running of the Kentucky Derby doesn't happen until May. But recently, the Lake Orion Lions Club held their own version of the most exciting two minutes in sports. On Saturday, March 18th, the Knights of Columbus Hall on Orion Road was the site of the third annual Lion Races. Thirty local businesses and community groups purchased wooden lions that they decorated for the big race. The creativity of the businesses in this community, absolutely awesome and a lot of fun. Attendees enjoyed a buffet dinner before the start of the races. At 7 p.m., the first race of the evening was underway. Six lions were lined up at a time, with large fuzzy dice determining which lion advanced. The first lion to reach the finish line received a medal, and attendees were encouraged to place bets on each race. There was a total of 10 races. There were also raffles throughout the night, and the lions representing Go GOP was named Best Decorated. The money raised at the event fully funds four-year college scholarships for two local graduating students. I am just so pleased to see everybody having such a good time, enjoying themselves, and helping the Lions Club support the Lake Orion community. The Lions Club is already gearing up for their biggest event of the year. The annual Jubilee will return to downtown Lake Orion on Thursday, June 22nd, and run through Sunday, June 25th. For more information, visit LakeOrionLions.org. Are you unsure about what to do after graduating high school? Is college the right answer for you? Oakland County has put together a business roundtable committee called Oakland Next to help answer those questions. On Wednesday, March 15th, Oakland Next hosted their first panel of speakers at Lake Orion High School. The 90-minute program had a variety of speakers who have found success in their career right here in Oakland County. Hundreds of Lake Orion students and families gathered in the Lake Orion High School Auditorium on Wednesday, March 15th to hear Oakland Next's first ever presentation. The guest speakers list consisted of CEOs, university vice presidents, executive directors, and co-owners. Matthew Gibb, Oakland's deputy county executive, was one of the masterminds behind the career event and explained how Oakland Next came about. Students filled out signs writing down what Oakland's next job would be theirs. 
Answers range from psychologists to lawyers and every occupation in between. Associate Principal Sarah Boudreaux said the event was great and hopes it opens students' eyes to the possibilities in Oakland County. Students in attendance also entered their names into a drawing for a chance to win one of six $500 scholarships being offered by the Oakland Next Committee. Everyone from the crowd seemed very pleased with the presentation, and Gibb believes it will strike a chord with the kids. Oakland Next plans on delivering their message to several other high schools across Oakland County. Gibb picked Lake Orion to be first because he is from Lake Orion and knows how hard the kids work here. For more information on these great opportunities for young adults in Oakland County, visit oaklandnext.com or connect to the Business Roundtable on Instagram, username at Oakland Next. You've probably heard of microbreweries, but have you ever heard of a micro-roaster? White Pine Coffee has existed in Lake Orion for several years, but only recently celebrated their official grand opening. On the afternoon of Thursday, March 16th, representatives of the Orion Chamber of Commerce gathered at White Pine Coffee in Orion Township for an unusual ribbon cutting ceremony. Actually, White Pine Coffee opened for business in 2013 and began roasting coffee beans at this location in 2014 using a hand-built Portuguese roasting machine. This is the formal completion of the facility. And, uh, and at times over the years, you may have seen it in various states of completion. Um, it is now done, and we are now uh, announcing ourselves to the world, to the local community. Uh, this facility is a coffee science facility. Um, it is, think of it more as a winery. We have a production floor. It's a coffee lab and coffee science facility. It's the easiest way to describe it. White Pine's products can be found in 20 different specialty shops in the metro Detroit area. And you can taste their coffee at several different cafes, including Crates Coffee on M24. You may have even seen them at the local farmer's market. Well, we've always been, like you said, we've waited a couple of years to join the chamber until we knew that we could put our best foot forward for the local community. But to be able to offer a specialty product to the local businesses that they otherwise wouldn't have access to from a local provider, that means a lot and really connecting to the local businesses and giving them the products they may want and deserve. To have the support of like-minded um, local people is very important to us. Uh, we support local businesses and we appreciate the support from them. So we're just thrilled to be part of the chamber uh, and to have everybody here to help us launch this uh, process. White Pine Coffee is located at 140 Englewood Drive, just off of M24. For more information, visit whitepinecoffee.com or call 248-221-5136 if you'd like to schedule a visit. The Lake Orion Middle and High School Bands took part in the 2017 District 4 Band Festival on Saturday, March 10th and 11th at Lake Orion High School. Lake Orion's four high school bands and six middle school bands took to the stage to perform their selected works for adoring fans and the judges. The competition has two parts. The first is the performance of three selected music pieces for a three-judge panel. The bands have been rehearsing their three selections for over four months. Students put in hundreds of hours of practice time to perfect the songs in time for festival. The second part is on-site reading. For sight reading, the band has a set time limit to view a piece of music they've never seen before. They then must perform it on the spot for a judge who will then score their performance. Here are the results. Scripps 7th grade band, straight ones. Scripps 8th grade cadet band, straight ones. Oakview 7th grade band, two rating. Oakview 8th grade cadet band, one rating. Walden 7th grade band, straight ones. Walden 8th grade cadet band, straight ones. LOHS symphonic band, straight ones. LOHS wind ensemble, straight ones. LOHS campus band, one rating. And LOHS concert band, straight ones. The LO bands came through festival with excellent marks. 
Bands that earned either a 1 or a 2 rating will receive medals for their efforts. Bands scoring high enough are then qualified to compete at the State Band Festival, which is held in late April, early May. Congratulations to all of our LO bands on such a great showing this year. Relay for Life is an annual event that helps raise funds for the American Cancer Society. The actual relay doesn't take place until June, but efforts are underway to recruit teams to take part. Owen TV's John Atwater has the story. On Monday, March 20th, Relay for Life held a Dine to Donate fundraiser at the Forest Mexican Cantina in Lake Orion. The purpose of this event was to kick off the Relay for Life season as well as raise awareness for Relay for Life and raise money for future events. Uh, we're hoping to build awareness so that people you know, know where our event is this year, um, that they know the new name, and we're you know, also hoping to gain some teams and possibly some volunteers tonight. This year, multiple communities have joined together for one large Relay for Life event. Mary Woods explains the differences from last year to this year. This year we've joined three communities together. Last year there was Relay for Life in Brandon, Ortonville, and then Relay for Life Oxford Lake Orion. This year the relays have been, the two relays have been combined together so we can get more participation and um, more people to join us. Both relays have kind of been losing participants. So this is our hope is that we get more people in, more um, help with each other. This way we get more people to help us out and get it organized. So it, it's kind of fun. We're, I've met a lot of nice people. I'm from, I did event leadership for Brandon Ortonville last year. So I've met a lot of nice people in Lake Orion and Oxford. And it was funny when I've gone to some of the um, seminars that we've had over the years. Uh, I met people from Oxford, Lake Orion, and they always, you know, look like they always have a fun relay. So I'm glad we got together and we can do it. If you weren't able to take part in this event, you can create a team, join a team, monetarily donate, or find more information at RelayForLife.org. John Atwater, reporting for ON TV News. Again, the North Oakland Relay is scheduled to take place on Saturday, June 3rd at Friendship Park. For more information, visit RelayACSEvents.org. You can also find Relay for Life of North Oakland on Facebook. That's it for this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the ONTV staff, I'm Melissa Kratt. And I'm Shane Stockwell. Thanks for stopping by.